So, hi James. Yeah, hi. Uh, Not Bernd, Georg. <laughs> Georg, oh yeah, you're Georg, right? <laughs> so, welcome everybody. We are here in Mundo Sundaram in Spain. It's end of November and we are still enjoying the sun. And I have a question for you, James. It's been yeah, a long time since we both had a, a conversation. Yeah. Um, yeah. And here I am and I ask the question. Um, what is the question actually? It's about reality, like what we see in the world, what we see in the newspapers. Lots of fear, lots of fear, yeah. conflicts and discussions and dialogues. And I'm not sure what, what this all means in regards to uh, Ishvara and the creation. You mean you you, th you think the that the fear is a reality? The fear becomes a reality. Yeah. What happens if they are right and the the world turns into a whole mess of um, what are battles and conflicts and insecurity? Well, fear never becomes a reality. Fear never becomes a reality. It, it may be, or you could say like this, it becomes a reality, it becomes your personal reality, but it never becomes reality. Why not? Well, because, because there's only two categories in existence. One is awareness, and two is the thoughts that appear in awareness. And fear is just a thought that appears in awareness. And there's no connection between the thoughts in, in awareness and awareness. If there's any connection between the thoughts that are appearing in awareness and awareness itself, then freedom's not possible, is it? Well, yeah, I can see you have a doubt about that. Well, why? No, we have to explain why. If there's a connection between, between, oh, this cat, <laughs> he got, he got, oh, Sorry, <laughs> he got bitten by a, uh, a, a dog or a, a fox last night, and he wants me to... Anyway, if there's any connection between the awareness of the fear and the fear, then there's no... Freedom's not possible. Why is that? Hmm? Because... The fear would affect the awareness, and uh, or, and or the awareness would affect the fear. If the awareness affected the fear, then there'd be no fear, hmm. wouldn't there? If awareness transformed fear into non-fear, into awareness, then there'd be no fear, would there? Hmm. So, huh? So, the connection between satya and mitya, fear is mitya. And, and awareness is satya. Satya means that what is, what doesn't change, what is always free, it stands alone. Mm -hmm. The self means something that stands alone. So if mitya, if fear has an opportunity to change you, huh, then fear is uh, more powerful than awareness. Mm -hmm. And if awareness has the power to transform the fear, then what? Then there's going to be no fear, because what? Because awareness will remove all fear. Hmm. So, so uh, the di the difficulty is that people superimpose. We call it superimpose. They think that that what happens in this world actually affects themselves. Hmm. And they think that what, what that their self has some impact on the world, but the self has no impact on the world. The self is always free of the world. Now, so what's the solution? The, the solution is to remove the ignorance, hmm. and that's what Vedanta does. Know what is the ignorance? The ignorance is confusing what one with the other. Yeah, yeah, that's what the Gita says. Uh, Krishna says that. Um, that the one who knows, he, he's not affected by the by the changes. By the changes that are taking sense. place. Yeah. Now it looks like it looks like you're changing. It seems like you're changing because you you identify with what? With reflected awareness. You identify with the subtle body, the mind. Huh? 
in which the three gunas are embedded. Mm. And because the three gunas change, that's a reflecting medium. We call the mind as a reflector of consciousness. Because the gunas change, it looks like the mind is changing. Mm. Okay? But in fact, the, 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 guna, the gunas don't affect the mind at all. The gunas are just the manifestations of ignorance. Yeah, right, but if you live in a country and you, it's not secure anymore, you, you can't sleep tight at night, you are leaving the country anyway, nevertheless. If you can't sleep tight, well, why can't you sleep uh, at night? Well, uh, let's just Because imagine. you identify with the, the thought, the fear. Yeah, but also when... when the there are many people who want to stay in the same country and feel secure in that country. That's true. Isn't that right? So, so who's right? The one that thinks the country's a, a trouble, mm. or the one who thinks the country's a solution? Yeah, I like when we look at the conflict in the Ukraine. Not everybody left the country. No, many stayed. Hmm. I I had this saw something recently where people were telling me that that the Russians were the victims of the Ukrainians. Mm. And there were, and, and most of the people in this satsang thought that the, the Ukrainians were victims of the Russians. Mm. Huh? Now the people who thought that the, the Russians were victims of the Ukrainians, huh? Were they tr were they right? Huh? <laughs> That's what you ask. <laughs> well, yeah, and, and the ones who thought that the 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 Ukrainians were victims of the Russians were they right? There's no right or wrong here. There's just your point of view. Mm. Well, the one there's one point of view that solves all points of view, and what is that? You know, the understanding of myself. Yeah, an understanding of yourself as as awareness, as whole and complete, mm. as existence shining as awareness. Yeah, indestructible, always. Shining. Indestructible, unchangeable, unborn. Mm. Not changing, yeah. Not changing, unchanging, and so forth. So, and so if there are two yanis and one yani decides I stay here and the other yani decides I go, then it's completely up to their con conditioning. Conditioning, and yeah. Hmm. So one. And yeah. conditioning is not something you choose. Hmm. Conditioning is something that happens when you're, when, when you're, you know, when you're living. Hmm. You get conditioned. All your beliefs and opinions and ideas are all picked up from the situation in which you find yourself. Yeah. And at the same time, there's the karma yoga uh, attitude, and you try to live a life where you can, uh, you got not o not over troubled with issues, because you want to be have a quiet mind in order to enjoy the presence of awareness. Well, that's right. I mean, karma yoga is just thinking from awareness's point of view. It's, it's, uh, mm. it's just assuming the position of, a, of, of awareness, and imagining that awareness is in a body, mm. and how would awareness see the world if it was in a body? Mm. Well, actually awareness is in a body, mm. but awareness is not in the body too, it's out of the body too. So, from the body's perspective, awareness is it, it, inside the body, looking out from within the body. Mm. And how would it view what happens mm. as unreal? It would see it as a, as a movie, as a film, as a play. And it would, it would, it would find it amusing that the people and, that are operating in that, in that movie think the movie's real. Mm. Whereas it, it's entertained by the fact that they think it's real when it's actually not real from the point of view of awareness. Mm. So, it, so from from the point of karma yogi, life's a joke, and so the karma yogis are cheerful and they're happy, and they're yeah, and their their awareness, which is what grateful to what enjoy the play of ignorance. Mm. And at the same time, they try not to get overwhelmed because they want to enjoy the fruit of their Well, they don't really try not to because uh, insofar as they're doers, they might try not to. Mm. But if you're awareness, you don't try. Mm. 
you, you just know. If you know, you don't. There's no trying involved. Mm -hmm. If you know, you're not affected by what happens. What what's there, what there is, is what trying are you doing? Mm -hmm. If you think you're a jiva and you're identified with this body, then you're going to try to not identify. You're going to try to avoid all these situations that uh, that are producing unwanted thoughts for you, and you're going to try to gain situations of what produce positive thoughts or wanted thoughts for you. The one karma yogi can decide to stay even where there's a conflict in the country and another karma yogi decides, oh, I'm leaving, I'm out of here. Yeah, mm. that, that, that thought will make his mind calm and the other one's uh, thought, I'll stay, makes his mind calm. Okay. okay? Mm. So, th so the objects don't, the, the situations like the America, a country, you know, people, all those things are just conceptuals. Mm. They're just con concepts. And they, they have different meaning according to a person's understanding of reality. Mm. So the cat wants to be, have some attention now. The cat wants, <laughs> the cat wants some sats on here. <laughs> Yeah, I think uh, it's good for now, I think. Good for now means what? Well, at least for me, it solved the issue of what to do. Like, as a karma yogi, you can choose what you do. And if you have one objective, it is to do an action that will make you enjoy your presence of awareness. And well, for somebody, that means going somewhere, and the other person means to stay. Means to stay well, it, karma yoga is yana yoga, it's knowledge, because if you understand that you're free, and that, uh, that what happens is not real, is not permanent, lasting, it's not real, then, then what? Then you're happy. Hmm. It's only thinking that, that these things, you know, are, are necessary for my happiness. Mm. They're not, because the happiness isn't coming from you. I mean, it isn't coming from the objects, it's coming from you. Mm. That's what the first teaching of Vedanta is, the joy is, the joy that you're looking for is not outside in objects, the joy is in you. Yeah, and at the same time Krishna says in the Gita that you have to act. You cannot just sit. You, you, have, you have no choice about action because awareness is shining on your body, your subtle body, and your subtle body is activating your physical body. Yeah. So you're active from the day you're born till the day you die. Hmm. And Krishna says the action has to be, in, uh, has to be so that it is for the benefit of the total. Yeah, it's appropriate and timely. Hmm. Timely means that the, the the apparent reality, of the world, is constantly making demands upon your body and mind. Hmm. And if you don't respond to the world at the right time, in the right manner, mm. with the right response, then what? Then you have conflict. Mm. Then you're rubbing against Ishwara. You're rubbing against the creation. And if you, that's not, that's not a, 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 a struggle you're going to win. Because Ishwara is inexorable. Ishwara just grinds you down. This is why people get old and tired and, 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 and worn out. And they just, they just lose energy as they gradually fight, fight, fight with the world. Yeah. Yeah, either inwardly with their own thoughts or outwardly with people. Mm. Uh, uh, however, that, that conflict plays out. Mm. So there's no actual solution here. Apart from what? Apart from seeking knowledge. Because you seek knowledge because why? Because it takes away the ignorance that you're incomplete. Mm. It's, incom it's ignorant to think that you're incomplete. There's no evidence that you're incomplete. The thought that I'm incomplete is not evidence of, of, of incompleteness. Mm. It's only evidence of itself. It's only evidence of a thought. I mean, when you go to sleep at night, do you feel incomplete? You don't feel incomplete when you go to sleep at night. Mm. You feel whole and complete. Yeah. So it means that uh, when you wake up, maybe that, even when you wake up, you might not feel incomplete. You might feel very blissful and happy. 
But then there's that thought, I'm incomplete and I have to do this, and what if I don't do that, and so forth and so on. That thought comes up. And then you say no to that person who, who is fearful or whatever that is inside of you. You, you find the opposite thought? Yeah, you just negate it, that's right. That's not real. That 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 question is not legitimate. Mm. So fear is it ever smart, or can it, or is it always stupid? Well, fear always protects itself. That's why people who live in a fearful world think it's smart to be fearful. Because mm. fear is a, fear makes you so suspicious that you uh, you try to cover your butt all the time, and that look like and if you in so far as you're successful, it looks like it's smart. Mm. But, you know, look at, look at the good example would be this, uh, this Donald Trump, you know. Mm. Like, now he wants to get what he's already, what he, he had and lost, now he wants it back. Mm. Right? He's totally fearful. He's fearful, what's he fearful of? Of discovering that he's a loser, that he's incomplete. Mm. In fact, he had that thought all along. Yeah. But I, and he's trying to avoid the the idea that there's something wrong with him, and that when there isn't anything wrong with him, <laughs> there's something wrong with his thinking. Mm. So this sort of fear it keeps you from enjoying the bliss of awareness. That's it. That's all it is. Mm. The bliss of awareness is, is your nature. It's always present. It's huh? Yeah. The the self is uh, is is what what is. It's existence. It's consciousness, mm. and it's bliss. Mm. Huh? All those three are not three different things. They're all just what the same thing looked at from different perspectives. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, I think we can stop it here, huh? Yeah, sure. Good. Thank you, guys. Thank you, James. You're welcome. Ah, good. Parent. Parent. <laughs>